Percival. This conservation easement and subsequent tax credits worth hundreds of thousands of dollars was supported by unanimous vote of this council and a letter of recommendation for same sent to the Virginia Land Trust, without which I am told the conservation easement would not have been accepted. The first occasion for the appearance of the Browns before this council in my uh, reign as councilman requested a change of that property to agricultural zoning. A short time later, they appeared with council requesting instead a discussion of rezoning. And then finally, with different legal counsel, requesting approval for placing the property in conservation easement. At no time did this town council either verbally or in writing object to any of these plans for the property and have not done so to this day. Moving on. When the annexation agreement was developed and signed by both town and county, the area surrounding the town, then so marked, was called the Urban Growth Area, the UGA. This area, after the adoption of Pugan, became known as the Joint Land Management Area, or JLMA. It was the Commission's intent, in my interpretation, that the key word in that designation was J-O-I-N-T, Joint. That concept, so vital to cooperative and common sense development of the JLMA, has consistently been ignored and violated by the county in every instance of development that has occurred in the former UGA. I refer, of course, to Mountain View Elementary School and 19 and probably more houses in the right subdivision, most with failed and failing alternative waste disposal systems and Woodgrove High School planned with a massive alternative waste system and a potential environmental disaster, saved only by annexation and central water and sewer by the town of Percival. In no case was discussion and input from the town ever requested nor accepted. The Supreme Court of Virginia and the Woodgrove legal cases ruled that the development plan, Pugamp, was just that, a plan with a small, not capital P, and therefore had and has no force or authority in law. It is then devoid of any requirement for, quote, joint, unquote, discussion or action, and null and void to this council. And I further believe that the town should officially withdraw recognition and participation in any future actions or discussions on the present plan. Transportation plans of Pugant have only recently been challenged by the county, and that is very common as well. These consist of two planned road developments, the Northern Bypass and the Southern Collector Road. The Southern Collector Road has been completed by developer at no cost to the town nor county to within one quarter mile of its ultimate intersection with Route 287 at the eastern end of Main Street. The original alignment was drawn to continue to Route 287 through the easternmost property of Crooked Run Farm, which would have a significant impact on one and possibly cause the demise of the farm operations. As this council knows, I have been and am consistently opposed to this alignment, if any other can be developed. In 2007, Mrs. Beverly O'Toole applied for annexation of her property immediately to the east of Crooked Run Farm and proffered the right of way for completion of SCR through that property. This council and this councilman looked upon that annexation as an opportunity to solve the two major problems of the original alignment. One, the impact on Crooked Run Farm. It would be minimal, crossing 100 feet of the wetlands, creek bed, and steep slopes of the connections between the brown property. Secondly, the direct north and south connection to Route 287 instead of being 40 to 50 feet west of the direct connection. In 2009, the town proceeded to annex the O'Toole property, began engineering design and development of the roadway, until we were stopped by two lawsuits, one by the Sam Browns and the other by Supervisor Burton and the Board of Supervisors. Now, as you know, or maybe some of you didn't, our next supervisor, Janet Clark, enlisted me to join she and Jim Burton in a golf game this summer. I have since had occasion to repeat that golfing experience and took the opportunity to discuss with Mr. Burton at length much of what you've just heard. During the last week in September, I received an email from the town manager, as did each of you, and I lost 
lost my cool. I sat down and wrote Mr. Burton a letter, copies of which I have for you and for the record. We'll pass these on along, and I'd like to read that letter to you all. Addressed to Mr. Jim Burton, Board of Supervisors. Dear Jim, this morning, Wednesday, September the 29th, 2010, Sam and Luda Brown, Kelly Graham, Valley Joyner, and others confronted and stopped the town's engineering firm from entering Crooked Run Farm to begin the collection of design data for the SCR alignment through the Brown property. This was done in spite of the fact that written permission and proper notice had been requested and received from Tim Brown and Sam Brown's lawyer. It is long past the time these confrontations and foolishness should stop. When we discussed matters of mutual interest last week, we were in general agreement on several points or issues. Number one, you requested a written statement from the town granting access to and from Brown's parcels before, doing, and after any HSCR construction. You should have that statement on your desk. He does. Number two, that Crooked One Farm should be preserved and with the least possible impact, only by the O2 alignment. Number three, that the most appropriate SCR alignment for the long term of Route 287 would be in a direct and straightforward line, again, only by the O2 alignment. And number four, that the county lawsuit concerning the annexation agreement in Pugin should continue ASAP to settle many other issues having nothing to do with any of the above. <coughs> go on to say, I would appreciate it if you would seriously consider in caps removing the O'Toole annexation only from your lawsuit. This would, I believe, solve the first three issues above and greatly simplify the fourth. If Mr. and Ms. Brown's real and true objective is to preserve Crooked Run Farm, then this is the only way it will happen. The vast majority of the citizens of both Percival and Western Loudoun want the orchards saved. I hope you will see fit to help us accomplish the objective. <coughs> We've only heard from Mr. Burton once since I wrote that letter in September. And he indicated that the only response has been to indicate that he hopes to have the county set a date for hearings on the annexation lawsuit. <coughs> I'm disappointed in Mr. Burton's response. I had hoped it might be more. But I wanted the council to see what I had written him and what I have to say about it. Thank you. Um, I uh, just wanted to uh, address a recent miscommunication. I caused some confusion over the last two or three weeks. I should have addressed it right at the beginning. And I also wanted to thank uh, Ms. Judy Stearns for her professional and friendly way that she handled it. I was recently quoted in the paper as saying some uh, some actions may hurt uh, our AAA bond rating. As members of the council know, we don't have it. Um, but I wanted to clear it up because uh, some folks approached me and asked me if the staff had 